Okay, th thank you. Are you ready? I am ready. It feels very loud and echoey today. Is that just me? Yeah. Mar Mark's in the sound room. He'll take okay. care. He'll take care. Thank you. All right, welcome everyone to the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting for Tuesday, April 16th, 2024. We'll go ahead and call the meeting to order. If you could call roll, please, Nancy. Michelle? Here. Eric? Here. Uh, Stephen was going to join us online, and he's not there yet. Carl? I'm here. Oh, you are. Thank you. I am. Yep. <laughs> Just came in. Thank you. Uh, Carl? Here. Brenda? Here. Aaron? Present. Hope is absent. Camille? Here. Noah? Here. And Chair Haggerty? Here. Thank you. I have a quorum. So next agenda item is the approval of the minutes. Uh, does anybody have any Changes at its discussion from the minutes from February 20th of 2024. So almost two months ago. It's been a while. Any comments, questions, discussion? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. For the vote. Michelle? Yes. Eric? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Approved. Carl? Yes. Brenda? Yes. Aaron? Aye. Camille? Aye. Noah? Aye. And Chair Haggerty? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next item we have up is the public forum. If there's anyone in the audience wishing to speak on a subject that is not related to the topic of tonight's public hearing. See no one. Okay. Then we can move on to the public hearing, I believe is next. Yep. So we have a uh, public hearing case number. Uh, use 2024-008 Lava Island at 139 West Hampton Avenue. Yeah. One second, please. Chair, we need a motion to open the public oh, hearing. Oh, thank you. Can I get a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion to approve the public hearing number. I don't have the number in front of me. Oh, oh, oh sorry. Open the public meeting. Oh, approve, it. approve the opening. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that you will tell the truth in this proceeding before the Planning and Zoning Commission? I do. Please state your name and position. Uh, Eric Sampson, I'm Planner 2 with Community Development. All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, so this is use case 2024-008, and this is a conditional use permit for Lava Island. Uh, so basic in background information on this, uh, the project address is 139 West Hamden. The current zoning is a mixed use zoning district, MUB1. Uh, and the request is for a conditional use permit for uh, indoor entertainment and recreation in a space that's larger than 20,000 square feet. So just kind of give you an idea of where we're at. Um, we're just north of uh, Hamden and a block east of uh, Broadway. And so these, the surrounding uses are uh, number one is medical offices, two is actually the subject site for tonight's hearing, uh, three is the Chase building, four there's another uh, site, another business on site, Denny's, uh, which is just one of the several others that are on site, five is the uh, Dry Creek Trail Park, and six is some mixed use housing. Um, basically, this is in a big MUB1 zone district. Um, there is some MUB2 mixed use business and mixed use residential MUR3B to the south. So, and just briefly with the project history, uh, they came to do a development review team with the city on December 19th of 23. 
they uh, submitted their conditional use permit application on February 29th. And then tonight is the Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing. So uh, basically what the proposal is, is for a large family-based indoor trampoline park and playground. Uh, the uses were also going to include uh, a kitchen, dining area, private party rooms, and administrative offices. Uh, in our table of permitted uses, as you'll see up there, that um, if this had been in a building that was less than 20,000 square feet, this is a use by right, and we wouldn't be here this evening. So the conditional use only kicks into place when you have something in the space that's 20,000 square feet or greater. So uh, also, I should point out that there's no additional specific use standards for this specific use. Um, it's basically, we're here to look at if the use is compatible with the site and if they're meeting part. And so that's kind of a basic overview of the parking that's available on site. And then, excuse me. So the planning and commission is the decision-making body when it comes to a conditional use permit. Other times you'll make a recommendation, recommendation to city council. Uh, that's not the case tonight. You are making the final decision on this conditional use permit. And you base your decision based on the criteria that's spelled out in Title 16.2 of the Inglewood Municipal Code. And uh, we will briefly go over those. One is that the criteria for a site improvement plan are met. Uh, basically, since they are going to inhabit a vacant retail space, used to be a big lots, um, and they're not doing anything to increase the size of the building, there's no going to be external additions or changes to the facade, which would trigger a site plan, a more in-depth site plan review. Since there's none of that, there's no uh, reason for a site improvement plan. And so the application supports the intent of the proposed zone district and comprehensive plan. Uh, since, again, this use is an allowable use in MUB1, it's just a square footage of the building that they want to inhabit that's creating the uh, requirement for a conditional use. Um, and uh, we also found that it does meet the intent of the comprehensive plan, uh, mainly the shop goal. And uh, the Lava Island establishment would attract a steady stream of visitors to a shopping center that is currently experiencing several vacancies, and the use would contribute to increasing the vibrancy and safety of the community. The third is that the is compatible with the area and other allowed uses. Um, and considering it's kind of in a shopping center with a variety of other uses that are actively going on there, uh, we find that this is a, an adequate use for the site. Um, certain conditional use permits, we would recommend a time frame, a duration of say two or three years. In this instance, we don't feel that that is necessary. Uh, so we're not recommending that any time limit be applied to the conditional use permit. Uh, there were a couple long range plans uh, that we took a look at. Um, and this conditional, conditional use would not create a negative impact on these other plans that we have. One is the downtown Inglewood Station neighborhood assessment map, and the other is the central business base zone and transit station map. Uh, basically, these, uh, this would be considered a catalytic land use within the area for the downtown assessment map. And basically, for the transit station area, it would just be something that will be taken into account when looking at future transportation plans for the region. Um, Staff did uh, send the application around to uh, reviewing departments within the city. Um, that includes building, public works, utilities, uh, wastewater, traffic, et cetera. And all of the departments recommended approval of this application, or if they were to have further comments, they were gonna wait until the building permits were submitted for official review. And then finally, whether there are any additional site or use specific, specific conditions necessary, uh, and staff did not find that that would be necessary in this situation. So we had, uh, the property was posted. 
Uh, we did not receive any calls of support or opposition or any inquiry, inquiries about the project whatsoever. So that leads us to staff recommendation and uh, community development recommends approval of this condition, conditional use permit as the proposed use is compatible with the applicable criteria in the Inglewood Municipal Code, section 16.2. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, and any questions for me? Questions? Go ahead. Yeah, no, that was a great presentation. Um, I have a just a more a question about, I'm curious about, is that it wouldn't need a conditional permit, it wouldn't need a permit at all if it was just said, under 20,000 square yep. feet? So on the use table. 1629. Okay. Yeah. So if this were uh, the same thing going on in a space that was either less than 10,000 or between 10,000 and 20,000 square feet, we wouldn't be here tonight. It was mm -hmm. basically just the size of the building, which is 37,000 square feet, which was well, like a bowling alley. Or what, did we talk about this when we were in Code Next? Did we change this or is this original? Did we? Ever visit this? I'm just curious. I would have to refer to Brian. I know. I wasn't right? here for the code next. Do you need to swear me in? I do. Thank you. <clears throat> do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that you will tell the truth in this proceeding before the Planning and Zoning Commission? I do. Please state your name. Brian Isom. Um, so when Code Next was being reviewed, what our consultants did was they tried to combine really specific land uses into much more broad categories. What they did was looked at how they were allowed. So even under the old code, this still would have required a conditional use, but they've combined different things. I, I don't know what all use, I can't remember what all uses they combined, but they combined it to kind of keep the allowances about the same, um, but just to broaden the use categories. So um, I'm trying to think of more specific ones in Inglewood. I can't think of any right off the top of my head, but. You know, if you look at our retail uses now, it's really just retail, grocery store. We don't talk about specifics of what people sell. Um, it really is just retail and here's where it's allowed. Here's where this is allowed. Rather than the municipality I used to work in went all the way specific down to a hat shop. They told you where a hat shop could be or a quilt shop. And that's not something that we want to do because we don't want to focus on what people are selling um, except for very specific criteria. Uh, but that's kind of how this came in. And so, yes, it's really driven by the size. If it was smaller, it would have been allowed, and they could have moved on a long time ago. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Thanks. That's all I have. Yeah. Other questions? Madam Chair. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, why is why did you limit the conditional use um, to two years? Oh, so uh, the code actually allows us to to recommend putting some. Um, a time limit on the conditional use permit. This is one that we are not recommending a two-year limit on. Oh, I thought I heard you say that it was a two-year conditional no. use. No, okay. That, it's right. up to the board's discretion whether to place a time limit on it, but we're recommending a time limit on it. So there's no time limit, because I was concerned about the applicant's lease term, if it's, you know, longer or shorter, that yep. you didn't want, don't want us to necessarily get in the way unless there's, of course, problems and things like that. So, sure. yeah. okay. Um, that's all I had. Thanks. Okay. I have a slight follow up on that, if you don't mind. I, I have a little bit of concern about not having any time limit on it. I know conditional uses for conditional uses, but we also have a neighborhood or the downtown development redevelopments in this area. So two years, maybe not the right time, but do we want to consider whether there should be some sort of time frame to be able to revisit that conditional use or would that just happen within the development itself? I'm inclined to say it would be more on the latter side of it. Um, but Brian, if you have anything to add to that, I would. So what was the question? Will not having a limit, time limit on the conditional use have any impact on the potential redevelopments of this area as part of the downtown um, redevelopment plan? No more than it would any other use in that building that we have not ever seen before. So other uses that are allowed by right, you'd get no chance to look at it. We get no chance as a city other than to say, you're good, you can go in there. So, so it, was, it would it would fall in line with every other use in that facility. So if it was still a big lots, there wouldn't, wouldn't be any need for additional use. About it. 
outside of how long they could be there. Okay. Thanks. Other question, Carl? Uh, you, you said that there is no comments, uh, positive or negative, on it. Was there any advertising that it was going to be there other than the sign on the building? Um, it was also advertised in the Inglewood paper. And just to restate again, there were no responses or no comments to the to the posting. Yeah, that we had nothing. Okay. No. Um, I apologize. I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but when I was looking at the the traffic study and parking study portion of the materials, I was struck by the fact that even after this goes in and all, you know, assuming the kind of um, uh, traffic that this would generate, that the area still has about twice as much parking as it needs. Um, and, uh, you know, in the broader sort of satellite photos of this area, you know, basically from Santa Fe to Broadway, you, you just see parking lot. Um, I'm wondering if um, there's a mechanism by which to right size some of this parking, um, understanding that there's, you know, th there's enough parking, there's way more than enough parking, um, or to make some better use of that space, like having some of the parking, for example, available for the businesses on Broadway, which have much more limited parking and people, you know, walking or, you know, something along those lines. Is there some way for us to, um, you know, use this, this process or some other process um, to sort of right size the parking that goes along with this development? So since there is no addition to the building or no out, uh, you know, exterior renovations, we do have a certain items in the code that do, that's pretty much say, if you're increasing X amount of space or X amount of square feet, then we take a look at the existing conditions around and maybe make some stipulations upon approval in that sort of situation. But um, we didn't find that that was necessary in this, for, the, for this no. application. That's where you noted there wasn't any need for a site plan, right? Is that kind of what you're referring to? Okay. And I can provide some additional context. So I don't know that this process is the appropriate way to, um, you know, require them to build more spaces or whatever it is to get additional tenants in the facility. Um, we do have some abilities now that we haven't necessarily had in the past um, that we are allowed to look at parking a little bit more. Um, so I think it's probably more just conversations with the people that own uh, the center and having some discussions on what we allow now versus what was allowed even less than seven months ago, six months ago, uh, when everything changed. So I think it's more on just having some conversations with businesses in the community um, so that they can see that either they have more parking than needed so they could actually build more or provide more uh, space for tenants on site or just change the, the makeup of their tenants. But as you noted, there, there's no need for a site plan with this particular development, so there wouldn't be any opportunity to have questions about that uh, topic. Right. I will say the Little Dry Creek potential opening of that would go right down that kind of gray line. You can see the little pond area there. It would be lovely to have associated with this, and maybe we'll just have to wait for another day when we can have a discussion with the actual property owner at that time if they ever come back around. So uh, I think that would be a benefit for the community that we should all keep our eye out to make sure if there was an opportunity to, to do. So uh, any other questions, Carl? Uh, you say the uh, other departments have approved the um, development of this. What what other part, What other departments and what are they... What, how depth did they go in their uh, research? Do you, do you know that? Yeah, so I've got a list of departments here that we sent out departments. to. If you want me to go through them, or do you have them? I can. Okay. I can, you can hop in if I miss anything. Um, yeah, uh, so this includes the building division, fire, engineering, land survey, the South Water South Platte Water Treatment Plant Review, Traffic Review, and Utilities Review. 
and call them. Um, they review the plans that we've given you. The bulk of these departments won't touch a review unless it passes, passes like zoning muster. So basically they want you to say, hey, they're allowed. And then when they submit their building plans, that's when everybody else kicks in. Because there's no real point for them doing all that work if the commission is gonna say no. So they wait for the, this decision. And then when they submit their building permits, that's when the building division goes in, fire marshal goes in and reviews their plans. So on the same side of the applicant, we wouldn't want them to go through, um, they, we wouldn't want them to go through an entire commercial building permit review process just to have been told no at the very beginning. And then they've wasted a ton of money on their end. So yeah, the building permits is where the bulk of the review happens once this commission makes a decision. Uh, the, uh, as far as parking goes, I, on the block, block party, that's usually where I park over there when I go to them. Uh, as far as having a restaurant in there, what, what kind of changes does that affect the uh, permitting for the building? Because the restaurant will be new. They didn't have a restaurant in there before. There, yeah, there's multiple other restaurants in that area. There's a Denny's, there's the Beirut Grill, there's a Subway. Yeah, there's a, there's a spot at the end that's currently vacant that used to be the Costa Vida restaurant. Yeah, there, there is restaurants in the area, but in that total, um, the, in that store, there was no restaurant in there. That's... I think is the question, would the size of the restaurant trigger any additional parking requirements? Is no. that what you're... The, the having a restaurant requires more it, for, for a store there's really it's just an empty spot and they're selling stuff for a restaurant you gotta have um, gas inspections you heating inspections grease inspections uh, various things with for a restaurant and food, the food quality has to be you have to have refrigerators freezers i think um, that goes into carl the that would be on the site building side once this plan as long as the conditional use gets approved then it goes into the other departments that would review the health and safety um within the site itself yeah, to make sure that's, that's up to but that wouldn't be purview of our committee but that's not um uh, that's not relative to us here tonight correct Okay. All right. Eric? Is the total vacancy 37,000 square feet? Yeah, that's the big lots. That's okay. the size of the big lots. And Lava Island is the, intending to take the entire space? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Or we can have the applicants, if none other? Chair, yes, do you ahead. want to check with uh, Stephen online? Oh, thank you. Any... Yeah, Stephen, any, any thoughts online? Any questions? Yeah, I, I have a question. I was going through the document here. I'm amazed that the building doesn't need any major upgrades to extend the Lava Island current facility. So I just want to make sure that that's um, a correct observation in the document. <laughs> Since it was a big lots, big lots before, I don't know if adjusting the building uh, doesn't really involve a lot of rework uh, again that would be when they uh, that would be reviewed when they submit for building permits for interior remodels. Uh, uh, okay all right thanks Stephen. uh any other yeah go ahead carl there's a lot of uh, comparison for parking cars and uh, um a few other things, Com comparing the, the existing building in Aurora to this building. This building is uh, the, Eng the Inglewood site is three times the size of the Aurora site. So is, does that, has the parking been adjusted for three times or is it just, um, has, it, has there any adjustments been done for the increased size? Uh, that I can't answer. The the Aurora's place is thirteen thousand feet, 
and this is 30, 37, three times yeah. the size. There is a traffic study in there, and it, it notes the parking that is there is pretty sufficient. I think Noah noted that it was almost twice as much as was needed. Um, oh, okay. And I don't know about comparison to the other site itself, but um, it, it does seem like they, they've got their items checked that they need to do to make sure that it's valid for, for our review. I'd, of course, defer to staff, but usually parking requirements are per square foot of the building or the or the use. So, Carl, it would be automatically adjust, adjusted because it would be based on this square footage rather than the Aurora square footage, if that helps you. It's based on this the square footage of this building, the parking required is based on the square footage of this particular property that lava is going to occupy. Well, the the, 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 the figures were created from the old building. You know? The parking studies for this particular development. Yeah. So. yeah and the traffic study in general about the, the uh, yeah, so there's total available is 441 um, Love Islands. It looks like they're looking at 102 to 123. So, um, and I think when this was developed, there was an abundance of parking <laughs> included here, uh, partially because I think there's actually a pretty large easement over the middle of this area, um, which probably restricted any buildings or anything like that on there. That and the fact that we built too much parking in it at the time when this was actually developed. So this is the, trying to utilize a space that isn't being used at all right now. No, I'm yeah. trying to get some information from them. Okay, well from the applicant or from, um, or from city, from Eric? From the applicant or from Eric? From this. The applicant. They're gonna do their presentation, I think after, after this and then we can ask questions of them. Anybody else? Good. Go ahead, Carl. Anything no. else? Okay. Thank you, Eric. Unless there's anything else you want to share? Nope, that's it. Uh, yeah, I believe the applicants have a presentation they would like to. Okay, thank you. All right. If the applicant can come up and share what you have here, and I think Nancy will get you sworn in to provide your presentation here. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm under the penalties of perjury that you will tell the truth in this proceeding before the Planning and Zoning Commission? I do. Please state your name and address and if you could speak into the mic. My name is Becca Hill and my address I'm is... I'm sorry, your, your name is? I'm I, sorry. Can't, I can't hear you. Your name? My name is Becca Hill. Thank you. You may want to pull that towards you just a little bit. It's hard to hear you from... <laughs> Uh, I'm a project architect with the Farnsworth Group, which is the architecture firm working with our client, Lava Island. Um, so as it was introduced, it's a play center. It's a 37,000 square foot uh, building that will be turned into an activity center with an indoor playground, trampoline park. Um, it includes multi-level platforms, slides, bridges, and other interactive elements. The facility as a whole includes a kitchen, a serving area, seating for dining and supervising uh, large family restrooms, private rooms painted with various themes for parties and birthdays. Um, services for food, beverages, and gifts may be utilized as part of the party experience. And Lava Island provides a year-round recreation option for children and families with various amenities for everyone to enjoy. Um, so you can, I don't know if I can control the slideshow or, oh, just right here. Ah, there you go. So here is our overall floor plan um, with some highlighted images. You can see the, the polar bear room, the space room, um, and there's a large volcano in the center that's kind of a bouncy house kind of theme. Um, so that's kind of where the, the lava island comes from. And then the other side has trampoline park, also kind of lava colored themes and everything. Um, I do believe the big concern with this was the parking. So we did do a parking study and we found that uh, studying the Aurora location, which is actually about 40,000 square feet, so very comparable in size, uh, their busiest times are on Saturdays. So we looked at Saturday specifically. In the afternoon, um, the peak travel, a number of people were there and we were at 102 for cars for parking. Um, that plus the 20 
cars for employees takes us to 123. Um, and when studying this particular site using um, drone technology, they checked in, I think every 30 minutes from about one until 2.30, there was um, a peak parking of 87 cars in the entire parking lot. So 87 plus 123, we're still only about 250 out of the 441 parking spaces in this facility. So I don't think we would negatively affect any of the other businesses going in there. I don't know if there are any other questions or topics that we'd like to. Anything else you wanted to cover here? Or, uh, that or? was kind of the bulk of it for us, really, was that parking count and study. Um, there's no site improvements. The only exterior mm -hmm. development would be a sign on the building to let people know we're there. Thank you for that information. That parking does tend to become a, a, a large issue, as we're all aware of. I mean, everyone wants to make sure there's enough parking in, in the appropriate place. Mm -hmm. Any any questions? I have a question. Yeah, sure. I'm just curious. Uh, so the Aurora location is the first location do you know do you happen to know when that opened i'm sorry I'm what do you happen to know when that opened or how long wava island has been around um, three years ago five years ago <laughs> i was just curious and it, it related to you know whether it's when was the, the study done on that site though so? the study for the parking counts was done yeah. just this past january okay. and we did that we we're looking specifically at kind of January through March because that's actually when their peak season is because the kids can't play outside as well. So a lot of people take them there instead. Any other questions from the commission? Okay. I thank you all for the, for the presentation here and I think we can move to close the public hearing. Oh, sorry, uh, Chair. Yes. We have oh. uh, a member of the public, but do you want to check with well, Stephen and see if he has Yeah, thank you. Stephen, do you have any questions? No, I'm fine. Thank you. And this is related to this development. Okay, thank you. Um, so with that, I can, uh, we can have uh, Alyssa Davies going to come and speak uh, in favor of the development. So thank right. you very much. Thank you. Can we swear everybody in that's uh, going to be speaking at, at the same time? Swear affirm under the penalties of perjury that you will tell the truth in this proceeding before the Planning and Zoning Commission. I do. Please state your name and address, and Hi. you'll have three minutes. My name is Alicia Davey. Um, I have a business at 3457 South Broadway, a uh, Zomo restaurant. And I also have a toddler, and I spend a lot of time at Lava Island in Aurora. Um, we currently drive like 35 minutes to get there. I've spent many Saturdays um, trying to find parking there, and it's really not that big of an issue. Um, so, and that's with the, their small lot. There is, theirs is very um, linear, and so you do have to park a little ways away, but it's never really been an issue for us. Um, we just wanted to say, as a business, we're all for Love Island going in. Um, anytime we get families in, that's great. I think having more people in the neighborhood, more businesses in the neighborhood, uh, kind of push out the the issues of crime and like vagrant populations. And so we're all for filling that space. Um, and then for the kitchen situation, I know Carl was talking about it, but um, it's not what you would say like a full service restaurant going in there. It's we. We've eaten at Lava Island, and it's kind of a little better than like a microwave pizza. It's it's pretty, you know, like a standard pizza. They have wings, um, so more kind of like kid kid um, appropriate food: pizza, wings, uh, mozzarella sticks, you know, things. So they'll probably have a fryer um, with like a small hood. Uh, if I were to guess at what they have back there as a restaurant owner, <laughs> so. I don't think it would be like a full full uh, restaurant shebang. Um, that, that's it. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Okay, anybody else wishing to speak in favor or in opposition to the um, facility? Okay. Um, any, actually does uh, 
staff or anybody have any further items to add? No? Any other question, discussion that we need to have then? Okay. So I think then we can go ahead and can I just say if this is more of a comment than a question? Do, mm -hmm. do you mind if I interrupt? No, please do so. Um I was just curious, um, maybe maybe I can't get an answer because they're not sworn in, but is uh Chuck E. Cheese a considered a uh, you know, someone is a, would general would be interact, you know, be a sort of a, a feed off of each other thing, or would they be a competitor? Maybe the architect could say something to that. Thank you. Um, I don't think I'd really consider them competitors. Chuck E. Cheese is much more of a restaurant where you go that happens to have play equipment. This is a play facility that happens to have food. So. Thank you. So at this point, we'd ask, ask for a motion to, or to be able to give a question. I had a little bit of a comment. Yeah, please. Um, just not really a discussion, but uh, I know that there's no site improvement plan required, but being that it's going to be a kid facility, I want to point out there's not really any crosswalks or anything. So it might be, I just wanted to throw that out there, that crosswalks could be cool there. Um, and then I also wanted to say that this reminded me a lot of Fantastic Fun, which used to exist in Inglewood. I don't know if anyone else remembers that. Um, but I used to go there every year for my birthday because my birthday's in the winter. And it was awesome because all the amusement parks were closed. And I think this is kind of a fun um, new diversification of business in this area. Okay. And so we still have a uh, discussion after, but I need a motion to to approve uh, in a second, if we can. Sorry, we need a motion to close. The so we public close hearing. first. Okay, I thought we. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, okay, motion to close the questions. public hearing, and then we can have a motion to approve. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. I'll second the motion. Michelle. Yes. Eric. Stephen. Yes. Thank you. Carl? Yes. Brenda? Aye. Aaron? Yes. Camille? Yes. Noah? Aye. And Chair Haggerty? Yes. Okay, now we would need a motion to Thank approve you. to start discussion. All right, so, uh, yeah, so the motion to, uh, to approve the, and the second to approve the matter reports. Motion to approve. Oh, am I seconding that? I'll second that motion. Okay, and uh, so now we can have uh, the discussion and then we can have our vote. So any further discussion? Uh, Camille, I think you noted the diversification of, of the area. I think the reality of the sporting of the comprehensive plan, shop goal, the sporting downtown Inglewood Station neighborhood plan. Yeah, Michelle? I just have one comment. I do think um, I would like to ask staff to please take note that um, to look at the crosswalk situation after they're there and see, I think that's a very valid point that um, maybe public works could take a look at down the road. Thank you, Michelle. Go ahead. If I may add, I believe that the, there is a walk and wheels plan for the, um, the roundabout um, that is addressing pedestrian and walking safety right now. So I do believe that I've seen, and I might be wrong, but I could swear I've seen a draft plan or at least been involved in some kind of survey. But um, we could ask staff to see if there is any updates for sure on uh, walk and wheels that would improve pedestrian safety through there. I would, um, in fact, there was a recent study about the Hampton corridor. They are looking at that. That's that's part of a, gosh, I forget what that part of that is. But that's, that's, um, I mean, I think the most of us underway. Sorry. Yeah, and my concern, of course, is you know walking over to Chipotle or something like that. I see a whole family walking over there, and that sort of situation. I just want to make sure we're aware of it. That's all. There are crosswalks across Cherokee. I, I guess I assumed you were looking at within the site uh, parking area itself. Well, and sometimes maybe people need to point out, have be pointed out that go to the crosswalk, please, or something like that. You know. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm not a public works person, but I'm I'm just see potential for problems there, and no big deal. Like I said, after they're open, you know, I'm sure public works will take a look at it. So I was kind of looking at in the site itself because uh, another thing about that site is the um, 
the striping is older. And so a lot of people kind of drive all over that parking lot, all, all directions and not necessarily up and down the aisles. So I don't know, crosswalks and striping. Perhaps with the successful business that is in there, maybe there'll be a little more motivation to keep the parking lots uh, more up, up to stuff mm -hmm. for what it needs to be. So thank you. Any other thoughts, questions? Go ahead, Carl. You know, the, uh, the traffic on Hampton, is, which is right next to it, you got 70,000 cars a day going up and down the Hampton. That's for kids to cross there, it's pretty scary. But uh, probably most of the people that are going there will be driven by their parents and they'll be parking in the parking lot. But they're there's bound to be some kids that are going to be walking over there. So that's, uh, that needs to be looked at. Any other discussion? With that, we can vote unless there's any other conversation. All right. Do you want to check with Stephen? <laughs> Sorry, Stephen, I keep forgetting your outline here. Uh, I do apologize. That's okay. No, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah, I think that's. Thank you. All right, Stephen. Yeah. Stephen, did we lose you or did I cut you off there? No, no. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the most. Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead and vote. All right, we'll call the motion. Uh, Michelle? Aye. Eric, how do you vote? Aye. Stephen, how do you vote? Aye. Carl? Aye. Brenda? Aye. Aaron? Aye. Camille? Aye. Noah? Aye. And Chair Haggerty? Uh, yes, and for the reasons of supporting the comprehensive plan, the shop goal, and supporting the downtown Inglewood station neighborhood plan, and, and after review of staff, um, you know, supporting the conditional use for the site. Thank you. Motion passes. Great. Thank you all. Um, with that, we get to go on with our agenda. Thank you all for coming. You're more than welcome to stay. We don't have too much more exciting things to, to talk about today, but always welcome to, to hang out here. Uh, I believe we have staff's choice. I have nothing. The only thing is I would ask the commission, uh, I sent an email today, a reminder about the uh, joint session with uh, city council and the budget advisory committee uh, for next Monday. So if you're planning on attending, please let me know. Yes, I'm attending and how will you be attending, uh, whether it would be virtual or in person so they can plan. If you could let me know that by tomorrow, it would be much appreciated. And I think that's all I had. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, sorry, Victoria, uh, attorney's choice. Thank you. I have nothing at this time. And we go on commissioner's choice. So let's come down the aisle. Carl? When do we get the uh, capital improvements out of this from council? The city clerk will send that packet out uh, on, so if that meeting's on the, whoops, I'm in the wrong month, the 22nd, they'll send that out on Thursday. So they need to know who's attending so they know who to email the packet to. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, I suppose I should mention it. Uh, right across the hall from in the lobby over here the, uh, is going to be the Inglewood History Museum. And that will be opening hopefully in a couple of weeks. And when that opens up, there will be open, I think it's planning on opening only on Saturdays for a while so we'll get a feel for the uh, attendance but uh, and it'll, it'll the this initial display will be Cinderella City not Cinderella uh, yeah Cinderella City the uh, the Rose Mall Blue Mall and they got a little soapbox derby from uh, from the races they had there and, but uh, it's 
Cinderella says, you know, which is this building? So I thought I'd mention that. Thanks, Carl. Derek? Sure. Thank you for the reminder of that, Carl, because um, I used to hang out in Cinderella City. I'm one of the little old ladies around here. So uh, <laughs> it's it's good to, to I mean, I, I spent many a Saturdays walking through those, those yeah. all of those hallways and everything like that. So anyway, um, I have nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff Brenda. Yes, I have something, but I'm sorry I have to bring this up. <clears throat> so if we could take a moment maybe to have a bit of a dialogue about um, Earth Day coming up and P&Z participation. You know, there was a call for volunteers and maybe a couple people from planning and zoning are planning to attend. And if you have your heart set on it, that, that's fine. But I know we've done it in the past. It's just that we've had um, a lot of changes in the last year and the landscape I think has changed a little bit. And I, I don't see a lot of value in our participation. Rather, I see a lot of risk with um, our bias and our reputation as a neutral organization. And I, I worry about that harm. Um, I also don't even know if it really makes sense, you know, uh, that it, for us, it does say that they want us to um, answer resident questions, which, you know, that's a lot to be on the hook for, Title 16 after this last year. And um, basically it said, you know, to promote our group. And I really don't think our group needs to be promoted. There's a long list of people who want to get on planning and zoning. But just so you all know, some of the new people here, it's that if, Two people can go to the Earth Day and sit at this table, but if a third one of us shows up, we have to run away, get away from the other group. Otherwise, they have to make the meeting, they have to announce it publicly. So it's already problematic, you know? Um, and this year, it's, um, it's more politically charged than I think our group needs to be aligned for. You do understand what I'm kind of saying? Sure. So can I, you maybe clarify what you're referring to? Because I'm not 100%. I, um, the 27th Saturday at the Civic Center, the Sustainability Commission thought it would be a good opportunity for a joint commission table to highlight sustainability related and adja adjacent commissions. The Sustainability Commission proposed one table where Water and Sewer Board, Parks and Rec Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, Sustainability Commission, and or Transportation Advisory Committee could join together to promote their groups and answer resident questions. If interested, please fill out this form. And I did actually run it by Victoria and she confirmed that, you know, it's, we would have to, if two, if one of us showed up, you know, that's when you have to make it a public meeting. I mean, it's not problematic in that. I, I love sustainability, you know, it is one of the, it is a city goal, but I know that we don't work for the city um, and, that we are to remain, you know, not committed to what might be what people might consider this a um, a political ideal, if you will. And I will mention that the city did invite uh, the YIMBY organization uh, for the 27th. Now, if there's nothing wrong with Inglewood YIMBY, I'm simply trying to point out to you that it has a an undeniable political slant, and I think that our planning and zoning should avoid it. There. Okay. Uh, Victoria, could you confirm that if it is a published event where it says there's a number of commissions that are there, would we have an issue if we all did show up and were there? So thank you for the question. So on, under um, Colorado's open meeting law, if there's more than three or uh, members of the commission, it would need to be noticed. But that's for all boards and commissions. So the city clerk's office has already um, noticed uh, or actually I believe the city clerk's office will be noticing this on the uh, calendar of events. So it will be noticed as a meeting um, in any event because of, uh, as um, Commissioner Hubka pointed out, other boards and commissions have been invited, including the Sustainability Commission. So I was advised that you guys were gonna be, we were gonna put out a public notice that we all could be there. 
um, I, I, I apologize. I thought that was in my email to you that it, the, that the clerk's office would be noticing this on the city calendar as a public meeting. Right. Well, why not the board of adjustments? Why not go like not code enforcement? I guess part of it doesn't make sense to me because I just don't see our role um, necessarily. Um, I, I just don't see the value that we add. You know um, what I'm saying, and especially since there's a, a risk too that we're not supposed to talk about answer questions about anything that could be upcoming. Now I know that there's not um, something before the board right now, but we also did get an email warning us that not all to go to the public hearing regarding uh, the Hobby Lobby property. So I mean, it could be out there. I'm just saying that uh, I just um, I, I I don't. I don't, I think what we need is um, a defined purpose if we, if we go to this thing. That's what I'm trying to say. And, and I appreciate your thoughts on that. And, and it, it brings up very valid points. I think the reality for me personally, it's part of our job as a commission to inform the public on a lot of things that we're working on uh, and, and be there for, for questions when they want to. I'm not positive I'm going to go or not go, um, but I, I think the points that you're bringing up and making sure that we are cognizant of those requirements is really important that we're all considering so we're following the rules that we need to follow and if we do go that you know we're representing what we're supposed to be doing appropriately good enough then i i don't that's all i have but i i, I appreciate you letting us know because honestly i think i must have missed that also um so it's it's a good reminder and thank you for that aaron Nothing for me, thanks. Nope. Um, I just wanted to, I guess, build on the comment that, that Carl made, which was, I agree that it is almost certainly the case that most of the families who go to this development will go in cars. Um, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, it is that way prominently because Hamden being so close you know, cuts off a significant portion of the residential population from having a good, easy, safe way to um, get to the north side of Hamden um, without driving, and especially, you know, when we're talking about kids and a location with kids. So um, I just hope that um, with this new addition to the community and this new, um, you know, demographic, uh, you know, filling the space, um, that the city will continue to look for ways to make the entire area, not just, you know, this specific development, but the entire downtown area, um, you know, consistent with people who um, would prefer not to drive cars to get there or would prefer to move between these spaces um, without having um, to use cars. Um, and I think there's a lot of opportunity here if we keep thinking that way. Yep. Speaking of that, the uh, expansion of the trolley and the new design looks super awesome. That's all for me. I also do not have anything else, but just want to thank uh, staff and everyone here for uh, for their efforts this evening. It's it feels like it's been a long time, and glad to see you all again. Um, Chair. And Chair. Would, yes, you ask Stephen, if he has comments, I know Nancy's reminded you every other time. I want to. Can you say that one more time? Did you make sure that the gentleman that's online doesn't have any comments? That's fine. I still like him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to participate and thank you for all your hard work. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Frank. Uh, with that, I think we can adjourn. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.